let's start. Simplicity is the outcome of technical subtlety. It is the goal, not the starting point. We chose this beautiful sentence to open our, our lecture today because there is a lot of truth in it. Every time we watch amazing couple performing for us, the image is always effortless and simple. So we think of it must be very easy. But the truth is that simplicity can only be achieved after many years of hard work, dedication and sacrifice. Many times you need to learn how to continue with no matter how many times of disappointment you will find on the way. So together with Sergio, we are a dancing couple for 15 years already, but our journey to develop the simplicity of ballroom dancing started almost 30 years ago. We feel very blessed and lucky because not only we achieved our goals, but we found each other through dancing and the journey up till this day was absolutely amazing. And especially in this difficult time, each day you have to remind yourself that dancing is one of the most wonderful thing that could happen to us and I'm sure to you as well. So enjoy that journey because one day it will come till the end. And I hope you will not stop before you complete that road to simplicity. Thank you, Dorota, for these wonderful words. I may continue. Uh, we have many complicated things in our ballroom dancing, but if we will have a purpose in what we do, everything will become more clear and more simple. The purpose might be like winning the competition or making people cry or enjoy every moment or be the best you can be, or trying to win the competition. If the purpose of what we do isn't clear, then all the complicated techniques have no meaning and no value. The simple idea of two people dancing together with the joint bodies made our beautiful ballroom dancing so known in the world for the last decade. And we hope this simplicity will stay in our beautiful world. Many times we try to improve or upgrade our dancing with complicated and new techniques, but we mustn't forget the simple ideas that made our style so great and so beloved all over the world. Simple ideas like love for what we do or connection with another human being or togetherness or breath also is a very simple and powerful idea or expressing the music or winning the competition. These are very simple ideas but are very, very powerful. So please don't forget them. Now, when we try to improve our couple, our dance, I will use one sentence which was shared with us from one of our teachers. We should be like sculptors. So we should sculpt our body or we should create a sculpture. So when a sculptor wants to create a sculpture, he takes a big and an ugly stone and then he cuts all the unnecessary things in order to leave just the beautiful and most clean piece of art. I think this is what we are trying to do in ballroom dancing. We are not trying to add 1000 things to our bodies, but we are really trying to find the purest, the cleanest and the most simple way. But of course, it has to be effective. So in everything what you do, you have to know where you want to go and how you want to get there. So where you want to go, this is your purpose, your goal. 
So you really need to have a clear goal of what, of what you're trying to achieve. And then you have to know how to get there. So you have to ask yourself first the question, what is ballroom dancing? Ballroom dancing is movement to the music with two joined bodies. And every word from this sentence is very, very important. And you really have to study every word of this sentence. Now, second of all, you have to understand how our ballroom world developed over the last century. So it started as social dancing, as all of you know, but then at some point competitions were introduced in our beautiful world. And we believe this is the best thing that could happen because there is a saying, uh, no competition, no progress. So because of the competitions, uh, dancing started to improve very rapidly over the years and it's still improving today. And it developed into a combination of art, sports and entertainment. We have many people arguing in these days in our ballroom society. Is a ballroom just an art? Is it just sports or is it just entertainment? Well, we believe that it's a perfect blend in all of these fields. So we strongly believe that every couple should study these fields, art, sports, and entertainment. So art is because we are expressing to the fullest our emotions and feelings. Sports, it's because ballroom dancing has a competitive edge and a clear technique. And entertainment is because we are doing this for you, for people. We are not dancing just for us. So we are trying to create something beautiful for you to hopefully appreciate. Or if you want, you, you can also criticize. And we have to accept every criticism. So this development, we hope you will understand. You have to know at which stage of evolution we are in our beautiful ballroom dancing. Now, next, what we would like you to understand, or maybe we will change this sentence, which we showed you here. This sentence was also um, shared with us with one of our teachers. Of course, here, dance is simple, but it's not easy. So don't uh, confuse simplicity with simplistic, meaning that it's not easy to achieve the simple look that we're trying to, to show you. And also, this sentence is very important for us. Become great at simple things in order to become good at complicated things. So before you will be a very good couple dancing the advanced choreographies, you should first practice almost to the perfection the simple basic figures, which were designed in a very specific way for you to understand our dancing and to be able to develop from those steps. So every uh, complicated and de developed routine we have advanced is coming from the basic steps. And today, unfortunately, Dorota cannot dance so much because she had a medical procedure today. Everything went well, but the doctor said it's better to rest a few days. So that's why we recorded few videos from yesterday and we will show you our first video. So first video will be the simplicity of the basic steps in walls. And then the second video will be the advanced choreography. So it will look more complicated, but we are coming from the same state of mind of simplicity. So please, Arthur, show the first video of basic waltz.
Uh, thank you, Arthur. This was the basic walls. And now let's see the advanced routine. Just a moment. Thank you, Arthur. We hope all of you could see the difference in a way from the basic routine, which was very simple, but also can be very competitive as well. So you can compete with these steps if they are done well. And then the transition to the more advanced figure, which at first look complicated, unless you will, you will split them in few bits, which, which will we'll explain a little bit later so it will become more clear and more easy to execute. Remember, simple is doable and complex is just interesting, but sometimes it's very difficult to, for the mind to assess. Okay, so now we go to the next point. So you could see the development from the basic steps to the advanced steps. Now next, what you have to understand is the elements which compose a ballroom couple to create a beautiful ballroom couple, to create a champion, hopefully, couple. So in our opinion, there are four major elements that compose our couple. First of them, is the look. Now, the look is a very important part of your dancing. And it's, it's, um, it's a combination between posture, a beautiful posture, a clean posture, a center, a center together, so we want to show togetherness, and hold or frame. Also in the look is very important, the dress, the tail suit, the hair and the makeup. So the look has to be very expensive looking. So dancing is like, a, is like telling a story and you have to tell an expensive story. So I cannot imagine myself going onto the floor looking like I'm going to the grocery store. So when, I, when I'm walking onto the floor, I want to look the most expensive on the floor, as well as my partner, Dorot. I'm sure she always wants to have the most expensive dress on the floor. Okay. And I just want to add to that look that uh, there are some couples that somehow from the beginning, they just match perfectly. And that look is just amazing. And some other couples that might feel difficult to find that balance to the perfect look. For example, me and Sergio, we struggle with the look for many times. And we tried so many things because our height is slightly different. We always had to be careful about the proportion and balance between each other. And there are many couples all over the world that have the same struggle of our. So every single couple is very unique and there is no two couples with the same look. So you don't have to worry and um, compare yourself with those perfect couples or let's say someone else. You just have to every day look for perfection inside of 
two of you because you chose to dance together and you want to share that beautiful look that if anyone is watching you get that feeling that you are absolutely perfect match in today's dancing i found especially as lady that the fashion of that look is sometimes uh, taking control of everything and while i look other couple often i see a lot of beautiful boys having the best posture and you know looking clean and elegant but often they forget that the couple look is much more important than the single person look so Whenever I watch someone and I say this couple is wonderful, it's only because they achieved that magic perfection into the look of together inside of the couple. So if we just want to maybe show that a connection and the frame that we achieved after, of course, many years, and now it feels simple and we really feel that we are perfectly um, doing it with each other, but it took a lot of time to understand how to do it and to know what is that best look of ours. So in our case, I always want to stretch really up high and Sergio is connecting quite low with me. So the arms of Sergio are suiting my height and I always want to feel that I'm comfortable in that touch and I have my own ability to move to my own maximum without pressure and without feeling that I'm not able to reach him. So very often if this balance is uh, done badly, I would feel stressful. I would, would try to be maybe higher or just taller, which is not possible. So each of us, we really uh, strongly believe that the look and the best look can only be appreciated if both of us are dealing with, with it. So it's not only one person that can have the most beautiful frame or touch and the other one is not important. So make sure inside of your hold, you really feel comfortable. And each time when you look for that comfort, it's because you soon want to dance to your maximum. So there is nothing beautiful in the static posture. You have to look for that beauty. Uh, in order to move to your maximum. And in this way, we will go to the second point of our sim simplicity in ballroom dancing, which is the movement. So once you've, uh, you've dealt with the look of your couple and you make sure that your look is very balanced, is uh, very expensive, and everyone, everyone wants to watch you, then you have to show a great quality of movement. So again, to move very well, it will be not done in one week. You really have to work uh, constantly on those principles. And to show a beautiful movement together with that balanced look, with that golden proportion. So when we create the look of our couple. We've taken care of our posture, of our hold, of our diamond shape look and clean lines. Now we have to be able to move in that position. So now we have to know which actions we can do in order to move. And we will make it very simple for you it's a little bit simplistic, so we want to take you to the really beginning of your dance journey to repeat these actions. So then if, you are, if it's more clear in your mind, you can go even further to the next level. Uh, once I watched a, a lecture from Peter Eggleton from Blackpool, and he said that uh, in order to improve to the highest level, you really have to go backwards to the very beginning, to the very first lessons, and make sure that you've understood everything in those basic lessons. Then you can come back to the highest level and then achieve everything you want. So the basic four actions we have in ballroom dancing are, first action 
is rise and fall. So we are going up on the toes and we are going down. So we, we are allowed to bend our knees. Of course, in the past it was done very little. However, in these days, these actions are really developed to their maximum because young dancers, they want to feel that they can express to the fullest their body. So th therefore, these actions are developed to the maximum. So how high on the feet you can go and now how low you can go, you can lower without losing your beautiful posture and ladies with a beautiful poise. So this is the first action and I'm sure many of you know. Now, second type of action is going forward, backwards and to the side. So again, forward, backwards and to the side. So you see, this is a different dimension. This is a horizontal dimension. And we do that all the time. So when we are trying to swing, we have to drive from the foot and really have to move across the floor. Now, third type of uh, movement is rotation, which again is a very big element from our ballroom dancing, we have to be able to rotate as a unit without losing the togetherness. Now you can learn so many things about rotation, but remember the rotation is a basic um, action that will be always there. So rotation, we can do it from the body, from the waistline, we can do it from the hips, from the hip joint, sorry. And also we can rotate the leg. So we can have a turn of the leg. Of the feet. leg and uh, therefore of the feet from the hip joint. So if Arthur can show my hip joint, I have a hip joint here and my leg can rotate inside that hip. So again, let's repeat, we can rotate from the body we can rotate from the hips depending on the situation. And sometimes we have to twist or rotate just the leg, whether it's one way or another way. So we'll show you slightly in the couple. So we are trying to rotate without losing the common center that is sacred for us. So you see, this is the third element of our movement. And the fourth element, which completes this beautiful system is of course, I'm sure all of you know, is the sway. And we can see again that the sway in the last years developed to really to the maximum. I don't think it can be done any more than that. And again, I think it's because the young dancers they really want to be able to express their feeling to the fullest. That's why the body has to be prepared to do many and a big range of movement. So the fourth action is the sway. Oh. And usually the sway is done Mm, to stop the movement. So if I have a big movement, a big rotation, then I can do the sway to stop that movement or to control that movement or to redirect it. Uh, however, today also the sway is often used to start a movement. So for example, I can do a promenade. The classic version is with no sway, of course but also I can use the sway to initiate the movement. Okay, so there are several places in our dancing where we can use sway to stop, to control our movement or to initiate a new movement, a new direction, a new figure. 
And I just add to it that very often when we are on that journey to achieve our simplicity and we watch better couple uh, than us, we might think, oh, they do something else or they are doing, you know, we, we might imagine whatever we imagine. But in fact, they just do those four elements of movement much better than we if they are in front of us. So do not complicate it when you practice. Keep it very simple and ask your teacher, am I good enough in the movement forward or backward or sideways? Am, are my rotation good enough or sways? So in this way, you can achieve uh, the beauty of that movement and really to feel that pleasure when you move to the easiest way with as less effort than possible. And it comes with big knowledge and simplicity of the actions. Yes, so these four actions we have in four dances in Bolum. We have it in Waltz, in Vinny's Waltz, in Foxtrot and Quickstep. And in Tango, we have actually only three actions. So we don't have rise and fall. So that's why everyone of every teacher says to you that tango is the easiest dance because we've taken one element away. So really you have to be always in a slightly more grounded position and now avoid any rise in that dance. So actually in tango you have only three types of movement, just moving forward, back, side, you have rotation, and occasionally, just occasionally, sways. Also, the frame in tango is slightly different. We actually want to have a more sharp lines, sharp lines, as in the walls, we want to have more continuous lines in our hold and frame. In tango, we want to have more sharp lines. The hand of the man is more around the back and lady places her hand under the elbow of the man, which makes it easier to control in rotations. Because the, the most important action in tango is the rotation. So we have to rotate to the right, then stop very fast, and then rotate to the left. Therefore, our hold have to be able to control that speed and that power. That's why the hold is slightly different in tango. And now we will show you again one of our videos that we made yesterday from basic tango and then going into more advanced, slightly more advanced choreography. So we will ask Arthur to show that video. Just a moment. So from beginning. Thank you. And now we will go to the advanced choreography, which has more syncopations in it, but still the actions are the same. Just a moment.
Thank you very much. So I hope everything works and you could see. So we know that especially the advanced choreography looks very complex. But if we will slow it down and when you are practicing your routine, really slowly divide all those action you have to do, there are really four actions or in tango, even three. And then go slowly and then you can combine those actions so you and you can have countless uh, types of combinations so you can combine rotation and movement forward backward sideways you can combine sways with rotation slower faster stopping continuing and so on but in, but in its essence the actions are very very simple so all, I'm sure all of you can do these actions perfectly. Up and down, forward, backwards, side, rotate, and sway. What is difficult is to do all these four actions together at the same time with a joint body like Dorota and with a very beautiful body. So when you dance with each other and you feel that uh, such a beautiful body is touching you then you really need to be good to be able to control all these four actions so that's why you really have to practice hard to achieve the simple maybe it's not so simple but it has to look simple yes and if you understand it in this simple way then it's much easier to achieve that and the only difficulty then it become to know which of those element in percentage are the biggest so some figures uh, are necessary to show the biggest movement some other are about rotation and so when you know which one or when do you want to show exact thing it becomes very clear and make sure when you practice it you both decide what do you practice and analyze it together so then it become a goal of a couple okay. yes yeah, so if you divide these actions maybe you can find easier the mistake and don't be afraid to make a lot of mistakes mm -hmm. uh, there is a saying that you have to, you just have to make the mistakes faster than your competition so you can understand and learn from these mistakes and correct them if you are not making mistakes it means you are not risking so you are not going anywhere and remember what I told you before you have to know where you go and know how to get there so with this, we can go to the next element that creates a beautiful ballroom dancing and a beautiful couple on the floor. Wait, Dorota, I don't know which one is. <laughs> Let's start with this one. Okay. okay. <laughs> so the third element for us is, is of course, musicality. Now, this is again a very big subject. Uh, however, the audience and the judges want to see a very simple image. They want to see a relationship on the floor from what they hear. So the music is coming to us to the ears. Then the dancer has to show a relationship for the eyes of the audience and the judges and hopefully the judges will appreciate it. So of course, to have a great musicality, first you have to understand the rhythm, the timing, the phrases of the music, and you have to dance in time with the music. So if you are dancing a waltz, and if there is a beat number one, you really have to be with your body weight on the foot on beat number one, exactly to be in time with it. If there is a beat number two, you have to be on that beat. So you can't be late or you can't be lazy <laughs> with this subject. So first you need to study the rhythm and the timing. Then of course you can work on your choreography 
to have a phrased choreography, which makes it easier for you to control how you are dancing on the floor. So if you have eight bars sections, it's easier to, to perform them. And it's more likely that it will be musical. However, sometimes it's more interesting to go against the rules. So first you have to know the rules, then you can go against them. And then after you've learned the basics of the musicality, now you can start to express the music. And remember one thing, please, that the music is, giving to us, is given to us. So it's our job to interpret the music. It's not the music interpreting our dance. So there has to be a strong relationship, a strong dialogue. When I dance with the music and I'm trying to be musical, I'm thinking what dialogue I have with that sound. It's not that I'm only listening, I'm only listening and doing nothing with it. I'm not just a um, good student. And who follower. <laughs> and follower. So I have to be able to speak with the music. So sometimes I will listen and I will follow the music. So really listening to that sound, but sometimes maybe I will want to lead that music. So once you know the timing, the rhythm, then you can give something from yourself to the music or you, can, you are allowed even to steal from the music. But remember, if you steal something from the music, you always have to give back after. Because if you steal the time, somewhere else you would have to stay longer. And also to be musical, you, you need to have your body prepared and fit to be able to fill out every sound that you are hearing. If you are not flexible, especially the ladies, if you are not flexible and your body can do only this type of movement, this range of movement, then you're not going to be musical, let's face it. So then you have to develop your flexibility an action inside of your body because you see we often can notice the best musicality only if the dance is done in the body not only in the feet and legs as Sergio mentioned that basic principle is to know the timing and to start with it and then you can see the dancing through the beat that is given when I place my foot but real musicality and real joy of being musical or giving or adding to the music is the moment when your body is involved in the action and when you feel no stop inside of your joints, joints and muscles. That's the most beautiful feeling and when you practice musicality, actually you should do it all the time because when you practice you almost always do it with the music, there is this unforgettable unforgettable feeling and uh, you must never uh, reject the music it's something like the most important so make sure you practice it enough yes and i think this is enough information for today about musicality and i hope you can understand and you can see that it's more simple. So sometimes we try to overcomplicate things or sometimes we have to. For example, when we are teaching, <laughs> of course we are trying to do our best, but we always try to teach the same basic simple rules. And sometimes you just can say what the couple needs in five minutes. And then the, some teachers maybe are trying to fill out the time, so they overcomplicate. But you as a dancer, you have to be really clear in your head what you're trying to do. 
because simple or complex depend on the way you describe things. So sometimes you hear, oh, this is so difficult information, but it's always to help you. And in the end, it should be simple to do. So then it has the biggest value. So just try to make it simple for yourself. And if you, if you feel it's simple, then you can also give it to someone else in the simplest form. And if it's simple, it just takes shorter time. It still will be a long journey to achieve your simplicity. But if it's clear for your mind, you can focus easier, you practice better, and it just comes uh, earlier, that fun from, and joy from dancing. Yes, and there is a saying that if you can't explain it to a six years old, hmm. then you probably uh, don't understand it well enough. Okay. So we have to practice, all of us, the simplicity of the message that we are trying to portray and trying to make people understand. Because not only as dancers, but also as teachers, we are responsible for you know, inspire, inspiring the young generation. And we really hope that not only us, but also young kids will fall in love with dancing because they will feel that pleasure and they will see it in that simple way. I just want to add last thing. I will be honest with you about this, that when I was a young kid, one of the reasons why I switched to ballroom is because I thought that it will be more simple to achieve success in ballroom because I looked at the top couples and I saw such a simplicity, such an easiness. It looked like it's more easy to do than Latin. Of course, this was not the only reason I, choose, I chose ballroom, but it was definitely one of those reasons. So me as a young boy from Moldova, not many people know that I'm from Moldova. I was watching video cassettes from Blackpool and from all the top competitions. And I saw such an easiness of movement, such a softness, and at the same time, powerful and fast and all of those things. But it looked really, really easy. And I was always trying to achieve the same sort of effect, if you like. And if we share the stories, I have also one of my own. My first teacher, who was the Latin teacher, he used to say to me, there will be nothing in ballroom from you. Uh, you will be a good Latin dancer. So let's have some few lessons of ballroom that might improve your ballroom just to be in, in sync with Latin. So in 10 dance, you can be, let's say, good enough. And it started from a few lessons, but they were so amazing. And the teachers were absolutely top and from those few i developed my ballroom so much more and because of my knowledge and passion to that ballroom i i was drawn to the standard dances Beautiful. let's move on yes so let's move to the last element of our dance couple is performance so performance is a very important subject because it doesn't matter how good you are, you have to be able to perform on the floor so people can really see how good you are. So for them to see how good you are, you, you have to know how to show that, how to project, and really is to show your message. So dancing, Dancing is just a medium, is just a medium for your message you want to tell to the world. So you have to use dancing to perform whatever your soul wants to live in this world. So you really have to go deep inside you and find those energies, those feelings and emotions, and you have to be able to show them on the floor and in the critical situations where there is a lot of stress. That's why you have to be good technically to be able to sustain those situations. And also the performance is uh, a lot to do with the result on the competition. For example, me and Sergio, we had 
this let's say a bit of talent or the input we we had into the movement that was absolutely uh, our most important thing and we spend a lot of time practicing that movement and we felt it's getting better and many teachers were telling us oh you are getting so you are so good your technique is wonderful and then we had this question mark in our mind so how come if our technique is almost perfect we are not winning any comps and uh, once we put a lot of effort into performance, the way we look or what do we want to share with uh, the people, and also if we are able to do it at the competition, only then our results were starting to move on and become better and better. So, so that's a very only, important subject. Only when our performance skills were at the higher level, only then we could become two times amateur Blackpool champions, uh, two times UK champions, world champions, WDC all, and European champions, WDC all. Because people could see what we are trying to do, could see our message and could appreciate. So, one uh, last thing about the performance, again, is a dialogue. So when we are trying to perform, first I'm trying to have a dialogue with myself. So I'm asking myself, what am I doing now? Am I presenting the left side? And again, the dialogue doesn't have to be a complicated one. You don't have to invent a new book and sell uh, the book. The dialogue is for yourself and your body will, st will, will start to speak. And people, they can really feel what you're doing. This is the difference. So it's not only about the eyes. They use the eyes, but they can really feel if you are talking with your body. So first, you have to really talk to yourself. I feel the posture. I feel the weight in the floor. Then I find Dorota. So now I'm trying to have a dialogue with my partner. So remember, f to perform well, you, ha you need to have a dialogue with yourself and then you need to have a dialogue with your partner. And again, I am inviting her, I'm touching her hand. So you see my story is very simple, but I'm trying to perform it to the world. Now I'm inviting Dorota, now I feel her body, now I feel the breath of the frame, and so on. And now your dancing suddenly goes from this level to the next level. And everyone can add different meaning to that uh, story or to that dialogue. It's just important that while you are moving, you know, your body, your feet, your legs and so on, you have to do it with meaning. So it, it just needs that meaning to be seen also through eyes of the audience. So it's always you with your partner and sharing this with all the dance floor, with the audience, with the judges and so on. You are not there by yourself and you are not there to hide yourself inside. You are there to open your heart and, and show that best quality that you practice every single day. Yes, so you really need to focus on this subject, how you perform, and you can even start with it, meaning that you need to have a meaning for everything you do, for every figure. And as I said, you need to have the purpose really clear in your head. Once your purpose, your goal is clear, then everything else falls in place. So your purpose really is performing for you, is um, giving you wings. Yes. And never forget that. I had a few moments where I maybe lost my purpose a little bit, then it came back. And always when we go out on the floor, we are trying to win the competition. So I think it's an important emotion to try to win. It doesn't go well all the time and we don't win 
all the time. But it's not a good energy, I think, when a, couple's when a couple enters the floor and they know they are not going to make the final today because uh, there are already six very good couples and they always uh, lost with those couples. So we probably will make the semi-final today. So we will dance accordingly. This is a very negative thought, I think, and a very negative energy. It's important for all of us entering the competition. Even if you are the last place, you are going out on the floor to win the competition. Then you will have the correct energy. But of course, you have to try to win genuinely. Genuinely. So really, you have to try to be the best, not by che cheating or <laughs> hitting someone on the floor. It's not about that. Okay, or when you make the presentation, go in front. This is called egoism. So we don't want egoism. We want a genuine will to win the competition. Already when I'm thinking about that, I have a better energy in my body. Yes. I was actually shocked in the beginning of my teaching career. So of course, as all the professionals are, we are dancing and also teaching. So I started to teach at the age of 18 years old, maybe. And at that age, I had only one goal in my life, to be the best, to be the best at dancing. Uh, everything I do, I wanna, I wanna do it to the best of my ability. I wanna be the best in the world, even when I'm cooking, a, um, I don't know, a breakfast for my wife. I want to make the best breakfast in the world. And I was shocked to see how many couples in this world actually don't want to be the champion. So now I'm more, um, how to say it? Okay with it. Yes, now <laughs> I'm more okay with it because I understand that people have different goals. But at that time, it was very difficult for me to understand how can, some, how can someone not want to be the best? So maybe they have a different goal, like enjoy every moment and so on. So on. Uh, but really for me, the best energy and the best push from behind gave me that will to be the best together with mm -hmm. my partner and my beautiful wife, Dorota. So today I'm not only trying to be the best dancer, but I'm also trying to be the best husband. <laughs> and I must say that is not always, I'm not always successful in that yet, but <laughs> I want you to know Dorota in front of everyone that I'm trying my best. Thank you. Of course, don't be afraid to, to fail sometimes, but you really need to have that, that purpose and I suggest to you to want to be the best because it's worth it and it doesn't matter if you achieve it. Yes. So there is a saying that you have to aim for the stars and then maybe you will arrive on the moon. So if you arrive to the moon, it's still quite far. So I think try now your best. we will leave you with a piece of our foxtrot. And we also have that basic moment, uh, which will be the first video. And then, uh, uh, ah, we have one video of Foxtrot. Okay. Yes, one video because it goes from yes. basic and into then, the advanced exactly. routine. We hope you will enjoy it. Like the 
Thank you very much. So I hope uh, you liked uh, our dancing. You could see the simple ideas that we shared with you. And I hope you like the song and um, the words in it. Mm -hmm. It's a good life to explore the unknown. I've got that song and in my, in my and Geno playlist. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it's fantastic. So yeah. just last... to conclude, we would like to leave you with the last quote for today that simplicity will stand out while complexity would get lost in the crowd. I think that's a very nice quote, especially for our dancing world and for uh, the dance competitions. Try to have a clear, so simplicity really means clear, clearness and clarity. Sorry, that's the word, clarity. Thank you very much for joining us and we had amazing pleasure and opportunity this was a beautiful day for us we hope you enjoyed that lecture as much as we did yes and again we want to really thank all wdc team is doing for the dancers we really really feel your help and we really really appreciate and yes. we're really looking forward to hopefully come back in 2021 even more strong than before i'm sure the dancing world will not be the same as it was it can either be worse but i don't think yeah. i believe it will be even better than before we are sure of it thank you